Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Founders Grid sponsored by Gapo.io. Today we have Tehe Nam. He's the managing director and partner and founder of Storm Ventures. Tehe Nam, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. I look forward to participating. So 20 years of being a VC, how's the journey been? You know, it, it's been a lot of fun despite going through a lot of ups and downs. I mean, we went through Obviously, now we're in the COVID crisis, but gone through the financial uh, uh, crisis, the, t the internet bubble meltdown, 9-11. So it just seems like every few years, there's always a new crisis. Yeah, interesting, interesting. So uh, let's discuss COVID, you know, because we, we can... Okay, before discussing COVID, you know, entrepreneurial DNA is something which I like discussing with everyone. So mm -hmm. in your... Uh, extensive experience of being a VC, you would have come across founders from multiple geographies, right? So now are you able to gauge that one course is better than the other or one continent is better than the other or the entrepreneur DNA, it's the same. And what are the three qualities in there? Right. So we're investing aggressively outside uh, Silicon Valley. Okay. And that includes whether other parts of the United States or, in fact, uh, we've been investing very well in European startups. Uh, and, and I'm Korean, and so we've invested a lot in Korean companies, and that's all of this has worked out very well. So what we're finding is, is that uh, entrepreneurialism isn't something which is like a, a part of just Silicon Valley or part of any place. It, it's really a, a select group of people, regardless of where you're from. And what's important is uh, people that are extremely passionate about an idea. So that kind of passion is, is what's critical because that provides the motivation, the drive, and, and all that. It enables people to do the things which they're not normally able to do, that passion. And then uh, uh, we look for people that uh, obviously has a lot of integrity because that's how you can hold teams together through hard times. And then lastly, people that uh, are self-aware. Hmm. Because if you're self-aware, then uh, you're able to get better. I mean, no one's perfect. We're all human beings. We make mistakes. We have to learn. And so self-awareness is uh, an important trait of how to get better. Got it. Interesting. Interesting. Unfortunate times because of COVID, you know, so much different from the uh, dot com bust or the recession right so over here we're talking about recession plus we cannot go out right yeah. so post covid world is something which we get a lot of being content is being generated you know we're getting news that multiple vcs are rethinking their investment thesis one vertical will pick from the other one so how do you see the post covid world and how do you see which sector is thriving compared to the other Right. So what I see COVID as is just really accelerating the digital transformation. And, and so um, what would normally take uh, five years, we're seeing in five months. We're seeing this acceleration because of the fact that uh, uh, right now with the shutdown, um, you can't see people anymore. So I, I look at it in terms of, let's say, customers and employees. Okay. I know you have a sales background, so you understand the customer side very well. And as a co-founder, you understand the employee side. And, and so uh, when it comes to customers, um, in the past, face-to-face -face meetings were critical. You know, that's how you get to meet them, build bond, trust. Uh, as Koreans, you know, drinking together is very important. You yep. know, as part of the closing <laughs> process, the sales process right. in Korea. It's wine and dine, wine and dine, you know, for the sales. Yeah. Yes. So obviously in COVID, none of that is possible with the shutdown. So we're learning how to do a new way of dealing with customers, uh, which is much more efficient, much more based on technology. And that is actually what the future is going to be, because that's how you can serve customers worldwide in a more efficient manner. So we're seeing that on the customer side in terms of how you acquire them, how you nurture, close, and support. The other thing that we're seeing is on the employee side is the common way that people always talk about managing employees and people is, uh, you know, you walk around the office mm -hmm. and you talk to people, see what they say, be out there to sort of 
uh, be the leader so they know that you know the leader is there all this kind of stuff that you can do by just walking around the office mm -hmm. well clearly in COVID when the shutdown you can't walk around the office mm -hmm. and so what we're seeing is the development of new management techniques uh, just within our own office of how we can lead we can inspire we can manage people in a distributed workforce mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. So, uh, going forward, you know, uh, many VCs have asked the startups, or even the startups have started focusing the need of uh, unit economic positive business model. The discussion has been going around since the WeWork debacle last October, yes. right? And I believe this has kind of like accelerated on the need of, you know, the runways increasing up to two months, two years, or two and a half years, right? So are you uh, giving the same advice to your venture companies and what other advices are you giving that you would like to share with our listeners as well? Right, so I mean, as an investor, obviously uh, longer the runway, the better, okay? Um, but then you can take that to the extreme and say we should have an infinite runway, you know? Um, so in, instead, I, I look at it a little bit differently and that is, uh, uh, Obviously, with COVID and the shutdown, we're in a major economic recession right now, okay? And you can see that in the hospitality space, you can see that in the travel space, and so forth. However, um, what we're recommending to our companies, because, you know, our companies are tech companies, you know, primarily B2B software companies, is um, actually look at this as an opportunity and find the new urgent pain. You know, in our portfolio, we're seeing companies like Talk to Us explode right now. I mean, everyone knows about Zoom, you know, with all of a sudden everyone doing video, Zoom has exploded. Yeah. So as I mentioned before, what we're, we see COVID as is accelerating the digital transformation to this new world. And so it's now about finding those use cases, that new urge and pain, that customers need right now. So in Talk to Us case, why are they accelerating? Well, what they have is a cloud-based call center. It's got the best call center in the cloud. Uh -huh. um, and, and so if you have, let's say, 5,000 agents in a call center room, it may have the best operation, but in COVID, you want that 5,000 to work from home. And Talk to Us can migrate those 5,000 from being in an office into working at home in 24 hours. Hmm. So this is an example of which, uh, uh, you know, the world isn't shutting down, but instead, as we're working remotely distributed, is creating new urgent pain. So the first thing that we, it's really important is, you know, in your businesses to find that new urgent pain in this COVID distributed world where people are working remotely, selling remotely, that's number one. The second thing is, uh, is to come up with a, a revised forecast based on this new world. So, you know, obviously some customers like in the travel space aren't going to buy or the hospitality space. So adjust your revenue forecast accordingly. And so with that, you will know what your expense plan needs to be. So after going through other downturns, whether it's the financial crisis or 9-11, I think this idea of just saying, you know, just have cash to infinity is great, but it's really not practical if you're running a company. True, true. So last question. Uh, we've been all forced to go remote, right? And it's a new learning curve for everyone, you know, be it big companies, small companies. So, so what steps have you taken at your end, both keeping in check with the mental health and everything? And also, do you think creativity is possible through Zoom? You know, what, have, what happened to the old thoughts of, you know, pizza meetings and things like that in the box meeting? So. Right. So we decided uh, to do something controversial is that when our lease expires in October, we're going to go fully distributed. Um, so we are, uh, uh, and part of it is the fact that, you know, we are investors in new B2B technology, right? And, and so uh, it helps by doing this, we're going to feel some pain. I know it's not going to be easy. We're going to feel some pain. But uh, uh, 
feeling that pain will help us become better investors in what we should invest in. So that's the first thing that we mentally have decided. And so, you know, it's like this part of American history where Cortez burned all the boats and therefore made the people more passionate in where they're going. So by doing this, uh, uh, we are now committed to figuring out how to work remotely, how to work distributed. Okay. So that's the first thing is that internally we have made that commitment that this is what we're going to do. Um, and it, as a result, what it means is, you know, how we work with customers, which are founders, are, are, will need to change. And in that side, I think uh, we've already, the change has happened. In other words, all first meetings are going to be over video. And as I mentioned, we invest a lot outside the Bay Area, so yeah. video is going to happen anyway. Yeah. So I think, you know, that's going to be for first meetings. And then um, follow-on meetings are going to be where you want to build relationships. And what we found is you don't really build relationships in a conference room. Mm-hmm. You know, you build relationships over dinner, over lunches, coffee, you know, that's where you build relationships. You rarely find you build relationships in a conference room, mm-hmm. unless it's like a whiteboarding session mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's going to be on the customer side. On the uh, the employee side, um, what you mentioned about you know collaboration, spontaneous brainstorming is absolutely critical, and that's what we need to do. And so we're going to explore many different ways to how to do that uh, digitally, and also how to figure out how to do it uh, you know socially as well too. But uh, um, there again, it's probably less so in the internal conference rooms. Mm. Sure. Um, but we're gonna, it's gonna come out with, you know, what's the right process, you know, what's the right technology, what's the right culture, and then what's the right people of making this work. But on the people side, I feel pretty good because all of us are fairly independently driven people. Yeah. And, and so I think we have the core. DNA to make this thing successful. And plus, as I said, we are now committed. Yeah, we have to be. Yeah, that would be very bad. But thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, I'm sorry, my marketing team tells me I have to keep it within 10 minutes. You know, otherwise, I'm we could have talked for at least one hour for sure. But thank you so much for being on the show. Take care. Take care of yourself and stay safe. Thank you very much. I enjoyed this very much.